<laughs> welcome to Winter Autumn Wednesdays, where I'm trying to build the Marble Machine X, you can see over there. A crazy machine playing music with marbles and the idea is to go on a world tour with my band Vintergatan and play live music on stage featuring the Marble Machine X. To make this crazy dream come true there is a lot to do and check this out, my private spaceship. Over here I have outboard candy for audio engineers, over here I have some preamps and in this episode we're gonna talk about my studio build a little bit because we've been doing installation two out of totally three. So this is the spaceship in which I will attempt to propel myself out of the marble galaxy filled with marbles on the floor and into the music stratosphere. Let's go. Building my own high-end music studio has been a lifelong dream for me and I'm working together with Olivier from ID Acoustic to make this other dream come true and this week we have finished installation two out of three. Earlier this spring we showed a video doing the first installation and installation two has really transformed the room in an amazing way. So we started with customizing this desk and before over here there was only place for rack units at the top and we customized it so I could fill it all the way down to the bottom which I think was a really good call. So I was a fragile snowflake, I got came here from the edge of the table so now Olivier is rounding the edge. Now my snowflake arms have a really smooth and nice edge here when I'm working at the desk, that feels awesome. Olivier brought a huge team with six people and while we were working at the desk, the team worked at the electric central and starting to prepare the acoustic treatment of the walls. So the first step for the walls was to prepare a wood structure on which we could add acoustic panels later. And I love the use of laser measures, they use them all the time and they fix the wall so if it was crooked they fixed so the wood structure in itself was completely flat and straight. So next step for the walls was to add rock wool between the wood structure and then finish off with grey acoustic high density felt boards. The total thickness of the wall absorbers are now 64 millimeters. So when you have a concrete wall and you add 64 millimeters of absorbance, that will not deal with bass frequencies. But this is only the background layer of the acoustic treatment of the studio. In step three, we will add bass traps on top of this treatment, but that is for later. Uka switched the position of the electric central because it was in the way for an acoustic panel and it ended up being inside my machine room which looks really 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 neat so the electricity is finally becoming safer and safer and more stable in my studio. We're also dividing the electric circuit so I can have audio equipment on one circuit and general equipment on another and lights on a third. This will reduce hum in the audio recordings which is really nice. In the first installation we designed this cool stage with cable doors in the floor and we left some rock wool visible in these cable doors and I felt when I was working with that I was not so nice sticking your hand down in pure rock wool so Olivier made a really nice redesign where he made like an inside box inside these cable doors and mounted the electric outlets safely onto the wall. So this new look is really nice for the cable doors. I'm very happy with the general idea of hiding all the cables under the floor because it's just much neater. There are different types of acoustic panels. Absorbers eat the sound wave and diffusers explode the sound wave, making a room sound bigger than it is. So basically the sound wave come to the wall and becoming uh, exploded into a million different parts going all the directions. So here we're adding these black cool looking diffusers into the live room of the studio. This is the place where we're gonna put drum kits, pianos, vibraphones, it's a part of the music studio where we're gonna have a little bit more room sound, a little bit less dead acoustics and the diffusers are meant to do a good job at that. Olivier calls this the live room because the acoustics is going to be more lively in here, that's why we're using more diffusers that are spreading the sound in a nice way rather than absorbers that are muting and muffling the sound. So the plywood floor... Whoa, this scared me. 
I was a little bit nervous for the plywood floor I'm sitting on that it would become a hollow box with resonance inside and after the first installation I felt it was a little bit going that way so Olivier fixed this by adding this super cool black backing and more rock wool under each of the plywood parts of the stage. Olivier, why are you wrapping the plywood with something black? Yes, this is a dampening mass. Um, we are dampening the resonance of the wood that could occur uh, when you walk on the, um, on the floor. But also it could occur with bass frequencies uh, made by speakers, for example. So this uh, is very, very heavy. It's like 10 kilos by square meter. And uh, it will block the sound. The team was here for four full days and they did so much. They put a floor into the live room, we put acoustic curtains on two rails, we changed the whole light rig around in several places. We're still struggling a little bit with how to put the lights, this is just a work in progress. We sanded and oiled the floor and it was really a huge transformation of the whole room. The moment has arrived that I've been waiting for a long time. I'm gonna populate my studio disc with all my rack equipment. I have sent my Genelec monitors on repair and here is two big focal monitors that I've been borrowing from Olivier. It's going to be very fun trying them out, seeing how they sound. And if you see my sound interface lying on the table, this is basically how I've been working a lot in my life. And now we're gonna stop this by mounting everything neatly in the rack units. I have three full rack cupboards. One here, another full one here. Here is my side rack, designed in the same way as my desk, so that's the third one. This is one, two, three Mixtasy preamps resulting in 24 channels corresponding to the cable we just installed in the Marm Machine X. The gain LEDs on these preamps are pretty beautiful when they move. So I'm gonna put these three preamps on the top right here so I can have an angle to film the preamps while the Marble Machine X is recording in the background. So you can kind of see doo, ka, doo, ka. Maybe this is not the most functional placement but it's going to be a really aesthetical one. There's a kink here in the rack, which means that we can't really put a long unit here. So in the kink, I'm gonna put a blank shield and then this power bar. It gives a design character to the whole desk, but you're paying a small price of functionality for that character. This is the actual interface that connects to the computer and puts all the audio in through MADI here. Yeah, this is the sound interface basically. Now comes a 32 channel analog to digital interface. It takes all the audio from here and converts it to digital to send into this interface. So here you can see all the audio is coming in through these ports and out via single MADI digital cable into the interface. At the very bottom I'm putting this power strip with eight other power outlets facing inwards. And in the remaining space I put this rack shelf, just an empty shelf to hold any equipment you need to put in. On the shelf I'm putting my NAD amplifier for the Yamaha NSTM monitors. So this amplifier I never have to touch the settings so it's convenient to put it far down and just forget about it down here. Left rack is finished, let's move over to the right one. This is Space Time Machine Reverb Round Set Machine from Boutique Audio, Tegler Audio. Two Neve 1073 preamps clones, two real Neve 1073 preamps. Universal Audio 6176, blank panel, power strip, and then this reverb. This reverb is a Lexicon MX400 sent to me by Greg Clement. Thank you so much, Greg. Awesome, awesome. I'm looking forward to try it. Here's an, another Lexicon Strange Reverb Unit, the LXP-5. A Fireface interface that I'm gonna use as an analog digital converter for all this. A DMX rack unit for all the lights in the whole studio and a power strip furthest down. Time to start the cable management. I'm gonna start with the power cables for all these rack units. I'm using this velcro cable ties. We are under the desk on the left side. There are the power cables. Same thing here on the right side. Let's go check out if this works.
Left side is great. So the spaceship feeling is really coming across here. Next step, connect speakers, both the Focal and the Yamaha NSTM. This is the classic triangle listening positions when positions to the monitor. Me and Olivier has designed this desk to host two screens next to each other, which means that the speakers are kind of wide apart in this triangle between the speakers and my listening position. So if I feel that this stereo image is a little bit too wide, I can move back a little bit or lay the speakers down with the tweeters inside. But the vertical position seems to be preferred when possible. Another good practice is to not put the speakers directly on your desk because it can resonate with it. So I'm just using a little bit of this acoustic foam under the speaker. And this speaker stand has actually a tilt function. So you can see that I've tilted the focal monitors a little bit forward. I think that speaker placement looked good. Now I just have to mirror it on the other side and connect the cables. Underneath the speakers, Olivier has designed a cable input. So we can put the cables through the desk. So the cable that goes into the back side of the Foucault can then be routed down here and in through the desk here. To choose between the two speaker pairs, I'm putting the Foucault on output one and two and then on output 3 and 4, I have this going into the Yamaha NS10 NAD amplifier. In the mixer here in the computer, I have created a speaker B output that I can control from this thing. So this is a digital controller for the speakers. So now I can, if I play a piece of music, I can change the volume and I've linked the volume on the two speakers. By just clicking here, I'm switching between the Focal and the NST. But this is any cable manager's nightmare. We can't, of course, live like this. So I did some cleaning up of the table, as you can see. And check this out. Me and Olivier have troubleshoot the lighting system. So this is the light control panel. So now when I move the fader with the mouse, I turn that lamp on and off. See that? Tiki tiki tiki. There's also strobe mode. <laughs> that looks crazy now. So every light in the studio is going to be controlled by DMX here. And I can save a preset and save it here in this panel. So preset 2, 1. Over here on the right side, I have my Norman headphones plugged into something controversial. This is something for you all to argue about in the comment section. A headphone amplifier from Neve. Total placebo, waste of money, or crucial to make great mixes? <laughs> I'm not gonna say, I just bought this as a gift to myself because it has such a nice feeling of this volume knob here. And it's a nice feeling to have like highest end equipment. They say headphones needs a lot of ohm. I am going to AB test it compared to the headphone out of the UFX interface. I have tried to do some A-B testing, but then I'm plugging it in myself so I know which one I'm listening to, which it's not a like double blind experiment or what it's called. I can't really judge correctly. Some people will say that I have bad ears if I don't hear the difference. Some people will say that I have uh, a bad brain who throws away money. <laughs> These are the cables to connect all the 24 preamps with the analog digital interface. So there's eight channels per cable and three cables for 24 channels. So I've also now connected the cable from the Marble Machine X, all 24 channels into the preamps and then out again. And a lot of people have suggested to put a digital interface on the Marble Machine X itself. And they say that we can have 32 channels in a small cable like this. That is true. I didn't want to put all this onto the Marble Machine X. And there are smaller preamps that takes less space, but not as high end as these preamps. But the point that you can have a digital thin cable is true. This is a MADE cable. 
So with this cable, all the sound will go through this single cable. And it just feels more intuitive to me to treat it like a music instrument and treat the preamp part as a studio. Okay, everything is connected. Let's see if all the 24 channels are healthy. Joe, 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 I'm gonna make a microphone test. No, and actually audio channel test. So I've connected to the first channel here through the Marble Machine X. I'm gonna hit record in Logic. 24 channels recording. I'm gonna head over to the Marble Machine X and connect in all 24 channels and you should see each number popping up at these 24 preamps. This is channel 1, channel 2, channel 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, check 20, 21. Check it, 22. Booyah Kasha, 23. And it's Christmas Eve or Christmas Day, depending on which country you live in, on channel 24. Do we have 24 healthy channels in the house? <laughs> Checking the recording. Okay, this is channel 1. Check, channel 2. And look here, this looks wrong. Channel 3 has not been healthy. Check, channel 4, channel 5, channel 6, check, 21. I get more and more excited. <laughs> 22. Everything but channel 3. Hmm, let's go back and try again, see what happened there. The channel 3 is not working from the machine. I connect myself directly into the preamp and now everything is healthy. Everything after the boa constrictor is healthy. Somewhere in the big cable we have an issue on channel 3. I'm gonna talk to Christoph to see what he thinks I should look at first. It can be on kind of a lot of places. <laughs> Warning, main control unit deactivated. Preparing for docking. Main control <laughs> unit. Docking insufficient arm power. Whoa, 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 whoa. That length has been changed. Ah! Attempt aborted. <laughs> Reconfiguring docking hatch placement. YouTube clown reactivated. Self loathing initiated. <laughs> Secondary docking attempt of command central initiated. We have first contact. Command central secure musical instrument digital interface cable. Sonic explosion incoming. Three, two, one.
Olivier, could you tell us something exciting about the next installment? Uh, spoiler alert! <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be very awesome and um, yes, this will be a major visual change in the studio. On Installation 3 we are, we are focusing on two major goals, uh, bass trapping and uh, variable acoustics. About variable acoustic, uh, you already saw some of the designs we're going to use um, on other videos. We have three different surfaces that we offer acoustic tuning. The wall on the stage uh, with vertical slats that are rotating. There will be foldable uh, wood panels above the machine that will just slide like this and uh, let the sound be absorbed by um, an acoustic ceiling above. And the uh, third um, acoustic solution will be on the cyclorama. The cyclorama um, is uh, installed in front of um, openings of the room, uh, doors and windows. So it will have some opening wood parts that will be covered of acoustics outside. So when you open, uh, it becomes acoustic. And when you close, it's just a cyclorama. So this way, we have uh, three different parts of the room that can have viable acoustics. It's all custom parts. And I'm working with a friend, uh, Clément, uh, which is an um, engineer in uh, mechanics, to help with all the mechanical parts, because there is a lot. And I love that in the vein of the machine itself, overly engineered, like all your solutions now are so cool and overly engineered. Yeah, it mirrors the machine so nicely. <laughs> yes, yes, it has to, to mirror a little bit the machine. It's far from it, but uh, some some common uh, DNA in it. I absolutely love this spot on the planet Earth. This is my spaceship to s propel myself into the music stratosphere. So thank you for following this build series of the Marble Machine X. These kind of projects is... Uh, very important part of the Marble Machine X process but we will be back next week with more build videos on the Marble Machine X and in August when we're doing installation 3 out of 3 we will be covering that as well of course. Thanks Olivier and ID Acoustic and thanks to the patrons and the YouTube members and thank you for everyone watching and an extra thanks to the Marble Machine X CAD team that are working on Discord right now. I think we're above 60 people in the CAD team and honestly to each and every one of you in the CAD team I want to say personal thanks for pushing that project while I'm pushing this project. So that's really awesome. Headphone episode everyone! It's gonna be more of those soon. <laughs>